In this short video, we're going to explore Pythagorean triples and their relationship to the mathematician Fibonacci. Now, if there's one theorem that high school students remember after leaving high school, Pythagorean theorem, usually expressed as a squared plus b squared equals c squared, but that only makes sense if you have a diagram of a right triangle in front of you, where the legs of the right triangle are labeled a and b, and the hypotenuse is labeled c. Now, a Pythagorean triple is a set of three whole numbers that satisfy the Pythagorean theorem. The simplest, and by far the most commonly used, especially in high school math problems, is the Pythagorean triple 3, 4, 5. Now, it's easy to generate more triples just by taking one triple that you already know and multiplying each number by the same amount. This is equivalent to creating similar triangles. So we could have 6, 8, 10 just by multiplying each of 3, 4, 5 by 2, or 9, 12, 15, etc. Now, typically, we distinguish between the first one in that list, 3, 4, 5, and all the others generated this way by referring to the first one as a primitive Pythagorean triple. In particular, a primitive Pythagorean triple has no factor common to all three numbers. So how do we go about finding other primitive triples. Well, many mathematicians over the centuries have come up with methods, and here are a couple of them. Fibonacci's method. So Fibonacci was a mathematician who wrote in the early 13th century, and uh, that was well over a thousand years after Pythagoras. So a lot of other mathematicians had uh, looked at Pythagoras, but Fibonacci noticed something that maybe some of the others hadn't, which is that Perfect squares could always be represented as a sum of odd numbers. So in particular, n squared is just the sum of the first n odd numbers. So for instance, in the middle of the set of equations below, we can see that 4 squared is just the, the sum of the first four odd numbers, 1, 3, 5, and 7. Now, if you take the rows of this table whose sums end in odd perfect squares, then you get a Pythagorean triple. So for example, the row ending with 9, 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9, can be broken into two parts, where you have 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7, and then plus 9. Now the first 4 add up to 16, which is a perfect square. So we get 4 squared. And then the 9 is obviously a perfect square, and we have 3 squared. And there's our perfect, uh, or our Pythagorean triple, 3, 4, 5, or 4, 3, 5. The order doesn't really matter too much. Now the next one that follows would be the one that ends in 25. So when you add up the odd numbers from 1 to 23, you get 144, which is 12 squared. So there we have another Pythagorean triple. 12 squared plus 5 squared equals 13 squared. And repeating this process every time the sum ends in an odd perfect square results in the following Pythagorean triples. Now, I've placed the numbers within the triples in increasing order, because that's the way we're more likely to say them. And here are the first eight. We have 3, 4, 5, 5, 12, 13, 7, 24, 25, 9, 40, 41, and then a few more. And those first four, certainly the first three, are worth remembering for any high school student, because they show up so frequently, and multiples of them show up so frequently, on high school uh, tests and also on uh, math contest problems too. Now in this little table there are all sorts of patterns. Notice that the first column is just an increasing sequence of odd numbers starting with 3, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, etc. The second column are all multiples of 4. In particular we have 4 times 1, 4 times 3, 4 times 6, 4 times 10, etc. Now that sequence, 1, 3, 6, 10, 15, is the sequence of triangular numbers, which I won't get into here, but that's an interesting sequence in its own right. Also note that the number in the third column is always just one more than the number in the second column, and that will be consistent for all those generated in this way. So Fibonacci's method does generate an infinite number of primitive Pythagorean triples, but clearly not all of them, since there are some triples, like 8, 15, 17, where the hypotenuse is actually two more than the longest leg. So let's take a look at another method. So Euclid was another ancient Greek mathematician. He wrote about 300 years after Pythagoras, and he came up with a method for generating 
Pythagorean triples. So the way this works is we're going to create values for the three numbers using the following formulas. So for a, we're going to have m squared minus n squared. For b, we're going to have 2mn. And for c, we're going to have m squared plus n squared. Now, m and n have to be whole numbers. And for obvious reasons, m must be larger than n. If m were less than n, then a would be negative. Uh, if m uh, was equal to n, then a would be 0. We can't have either of those options. Now, exploring the first few possibilities that satisfy these conditions gives the following results. So you can see the, the table here. We have a value of m of 2, a value of n of 1, and we get the 3, 4, 5 uh, primitive Pythagorean triple. But the very next one there, with a value of m for 3 and n is 1, gives us 8, 6, 10 which is a Pythagorean triple, but it is not a primitive. I've labeled or I've, I've indicated all the primitive ones in with pink backgrounds. So you can see it generates a lot of different uh, Pythagorean triples. Uh, every row is unique, but some are primitives and some are not primitives. Now, there are some other patterns here too. The values of B are always even here, but the values of A are sometimes even and sometimes odd. For all the primitive triples though, the values of A are odd. Now, it is actually possible to come up with a rule for which values of M and N will generate primitive triples. Notice that for all the primitive triples, M and N are relatively prime. That means that they have no common factors. However, this alone isn't sufficient to generate a primitive triple. We can see that right here with 6, 1, or sorry, 7, 1. Those are relatively prime, but it didn't generate a primitive. In order for it to generate a primitive triple, we need one additional condition, which is that either m or n must be even. All right, so for 6, 1, that generates a primitive. For 7, 4, that generates a primitive. 7, 2, that generates a primitive, etc. All right, looping back to Fibonacci. Fibonacci is better known for the sequence that bears his name. The Fibonacci sequence starts with 1, 1, and every subsequent term is the sum of the previous two. Here are the first 15 terms in the sequence, labeled using F and a subscript, 1, 2, 3, to indicate the first, second, third, etc. So F1, F2 are just 1, 1, as I said above, and then F3 would be 1 plus 1, which is 2. F4 is 1 plus 2, which is 3. The next one would be 5, and then 8, 13, 21, 34, etc. Now, this sequence has lots and lots of interesting patterns and, and lots of connections to nature. We're not going to go into that right here. But what does this have to do with Pythagorean triples? It turns out we can create a triple by taking any four consecutive Fibonacci numbers and following these rules. Multiply the two outer numbers for the first member of the Pythagorean triple. Multiply the two middle numbers and double the result for the second member of the triple. Add the squares of the inner two numbers to get the third member of the triple. So let's see what this generates for the first four Fibonacci numbers. Now remember the first four are 1, 1, 2, 3. So for A we get f1 times f4, which is 1 times 3, or 3. For b, we get twice f2 times f3, so that's 2 times 1 times 2, which is 4. And for c, we get f2 squared plus f3 squared, so that's 1 squared plus 2 squared, which is 5. Now, of course, once we have the first two numbers, we could have just summed their squares and taken the square root of that. But it's interesting that the sum of the squares of the middle two numbers gives us the same result. Now. Does this always work? We saw it just worked for the first four. Well, here's a table showing what it looks like for the first four, and then for uh, f2 through 5, and then f3 through 6, and then f4 through 7. So the first couple of rows, you can see 3, 4, 5, 5, 12, 13. Those are both primitive triples. 16, 30, 34 is clearly uh, not a primitive triple. Uh, they're all even. Uh, but some of these are primitive and some are not. Now, it gets more interesting. Let's take a look at a particular row. How about the third row in which we're working through with the third through sixth Fibonacci numbers? 
So that would be the one that generated the 16, 30, 34. Now, the value of C in that row is 34, which happens to be the ninth Fibonacci number. In other words, by adding the indices of the two outer numbers, or alternatively the two inner numbers, we get the index of the Fibonacci number corresponding to the hypotenuse, or the C value. That, I think, is completely astounding, and that works for all of these. There's one more amazing connection. Recall Euclid's method. If we let M and N take on the values of Fibonacci numbers sequentially, beginning with M equals 2 and N equals 1, we find that in each case, C also turns out to be a Fibonacci number. So here we have a table. M is 2, N is 1. Those are both sequential Fibonacci numbers. We get the primitive 3, 4, 5. For m equals 3, n equals 2, we get 5, 12, 13. Now once again, we're not getting always primitive triples, but we are getting triples. So here we have 5 and 3 gives us 16, 30, 34. 8 and 5 give us 39, 80, 89. And again, a, an amazing and unexpected connection between Pythagorean triples and Fibonacci. And as you can see, from the coloring we've used before, not all of them are primitive, but it's still pretty amazing. Now, if you want to learn more about the methods for calculating Pythagorean triples, and there are quite a few others, and also some of the properties uh, that I haven't mentioned, you can take a look at Chapter 4 of the outstanding book, The Pythagorean Theorem by Alfred Posamontier. I've taken the examples in this article from that chapter, and I will provide links to both this document and also the uh, links to the book uh, in the show notes below.